Welcome to Two Guys Garage. We got a cool episode today. Literally, it's all about keeping cool on those hot summer days. Speaking of hot, Bird is brought by his personal project. You thought my stuff was weird. Wait till you see this thing. American muscle meets German, road race meets street car. It's a way cool Beamer. So stay tuned, we got a great show for you today. Cool. All right. Now, got the 07 Toyota Tacoma, 200,000 miles, three shifts a day down in Florida. That's, that's a lot of work. Out. Yeah. There's a blower on the inside. The AC blower just <laughs> it's blowing warm air, and we're throwing codes galore. Yeah. Now we're gonna start with the AC system. Now you might think they're a little bit complicated and a little scary, but they're actually really simple. You can actually make one in your garage. It may not work real great, but you can try it out. If you take your normal shop compressor and you build up pressure on it, if you feel that tank, it gets nice and hot. Well, if you release that gas, it's gonna go back to the same temperature as it was when you started. But if you let it sit for a while, that hot gas will normally cool off. It'll just dissipate into the shop. And then when you open that valve, that expansion, it's gonna be cold. Put your hand down there and you can feel that cold air coming out. So if you're willing to wait around for a while, you and can get some your, cold you're air. You're willing to hug your own compressor. Yeah, <laughs> but if you're not willing to wait around for a while, you can put a radiator on it. So you build up pressure with the compressor, it's gonna get hot, and I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna pull that heat out of the system, so now when I expand it, it's gonna be cold, and I can put that cold refrigerant through the cabin, and then you can blow it right on you and stay nice and cool. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of compressors, hugging your compressor, and this is your old R4. Now this is a radial compressor, so there's four pistons going in a radial configuration. This was used from the 70s all the way to the 90s. That was a big upgrade back in the day. Yeah. Now we're moving up to this. Now you got a swash plate here, and this is a six piston. And look how this thing works. It spins around, and all six pistons are moving and making that compressor work. You got a Teflon lined uh, piston here, and if you look at the front, you've got your clutch. The way the clutch works, when the compressor says, hey, I need more pressure, Whew. sends power through here. It's an electromagnet. Man. Brings the two together, locks it, and now it's spinning. Yeah, so to make it operate, it clicks on. When you got enough cooling, it clicks off. Well, the upgrade to that is the variable compressor. So instead of a swash plate, it's a wobble plate, which means it can now adjust this angle. So I can change the pitch so I don't have to get a full stroke if I don't need it. I can get a little partial stroke so yeah. I can flatten that guy out. So if I got a lot of high RPMs and I'm moving that pump, again, I can shorten that stroke or if I don't need all that cooling, sure. that's a great way to get efficiency and all the performance out of your pump. So that's what we've got in this guy. This is the variable uh, displacement version. Now this is the 10 piston version of this one. So a real modern unit, this is a Delphi unit. It's the factory one, they're the supplier for the Tacoma. And what's nice is you can get that same factory quality and fit that you got on your original piece and you can get it through the dealer or you can get it at your normal parts store. So it's an aftermarket brand of the same you know, quality compressor. Now the great thing about getting it at your parts store versus the dealer, Normally you'll have to buy it in pieces. So you have a hub and a clutch and you have your basic unit. Now you got this shim kit. So you've got to get your clutch just gap, you know, just right. But when you buy the Delphi unit, you know, through your parts store, it's all complete. It's assembled at the factory. You know that all your gaps are correct. Yeah, and you get to trust the 100 years that Delphi has been around and 50 years they've been doing compressors versus your 19 year old service tech that's putting it in yeah. at the dealership. So now a great selection of compressors. So it's <laughs> cool to get the little history of it. And another thing you might want to replace is your expansion valve or an orifice valve. So this is the restriction in your system. So that little orifice is important to kind of keep, um, you know, circulating properly. You've got a filter here somewhere in the system. This one slides right in here on your tube. You've got seals. So go ahead and replace a lot of those things. Yeah. And you want to replace your dryer. The dryer has got desiccant in it. It's going to pull moisture out of the system. It's going to keep the chemistry right so you don't get corrosion and wear. Yeah. And in this case, the dryer is in the condenser. Convenient. So we're going to replace both <laughs> together. Yep. So last thing we got to do is make sure we've got the right oil and the right amount. So we're going to take and pop these off. And we're going to measure the oil we pour out of here. And the amount that we pour out, we're going to put back in here. And we're going to swirl it around. Not grabbing the pulley, because that doesn't do anything. You're going to grab this center hub, and you're going to spin it around. Get that oil nice and lubed. Or put the caps back on, and you can spin it. Now I can put it back in the system, seal it up, yep, pressurize it. Right. Right now, we gotta take a break. When we get back, we're gonna reinstall this baby, 
get this guy happy with a brand new AC unit. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Waterloo Industries, storage and organization. Experience life uncluttered. All right, and we've got our AC machine getting hooked up here. We've got our uh, AC system a lot farther than the last time you saw it. We've got our AC compressor installed. We've got our Fiat belt on. And we pulled the front half of this truck apart and got our condenser in and out. So pulled the grill. We were able to get our fasteners loose, pulled the hood latch out of the way, slowly pulled the condenser out, swapped over our little bracketry, put our new seals on, lubricated them, got everything back in and sealed tight. Now we're back here at our machine here where we can test out the work that we did. Now, when we first started the project, we actually recovered. We pulled all the refrigerant out and we've captured it so it doesn't go in the atmosphere. That let us take the system apart, do our work, put it back together. Now we're going to pull a vacuum. So we're going to pull all the air, hopefully the moisture out. We're going to clean that system and evacuate it down under vacuum. We can seal it and let it sit for a few minutes and see if it holds that vacuum. It's a good way to check the integrity of your system and your seals. Once we have some confidence, now we can charge the system back up, get it running, check all our coolant levels, our cooling levels, and uh, then we'll be on the road. So let me go ahead and get this thing kicked off under vacuum, and we'll see how Brian's doing under the dash. Okay, we're gonna change out this blower motor. It's really easy. First thing is get the glove box out of the way. There's little tabs, you push those out of the way. Now, we look at this old unit, try to spin it. Doesn't do very good. And I turn it on, look at it, barely even wants to go. Listen, makes a nasty noise. Now these are really easy to put in. This is our Delphi unit. Oh, look how that moves. Now this is pre-balanced, so it's not gonna shake anymore. Pre-lubricated bearings. Comes with everything you need. This is where your old plug will go in. Pop that in, flip it over. Three bolts come up into the bottom. Really easy to reinstall. Get that out of the way. How's that install over there on that blower fan, oh. Brian? Good, found some snacks in there too. Ooh, snacks are good. I'm gonna plug in my OBD2 sensor and check some of these codes. So I'm gonna power this guy up a little bit and read codes, downloading, downloading. All right, so we got a P0141, which is a heated oxygen sensor circuit. So we got bank one, sensor two. Okay, so we probably have an O2 sensor it's got 200,000 miles on this truck. It's probably kind of depleting. So why don't we change that out? We'll reset the codes and see if that does the job. Okay, so here's our catalytic converter here. Now we read the code, it said bank one, which is the right side, sensor two. There's an O2 sensor in the front of the cat and one in the rear. And it told us that was the bad one. So in order to change it, all I have to do is pull the plug now, when you take this thing out, you can imagine with all the heat and the contaminants going through this pipe, it really makes those threads to where they'll lock up. Now, you could put a wrench on it, but you just might round it off. We've got this really cool tool, and it's got a slot in it. And what the slot does is it allows you to slide it over the wire. I can put the thing on, right? Like that. Get it around. Okay. So now, you got a cool little tool to get this off, and you get a full coverage on all sides. Now, you can put a wrench on it. Do it that way and break it. Or you can also put a socket on the end. So that's cool. Now at that point, all you have to do is unthread it, take it out, <clears throat> and you get your new one. Now this is our new one from Delphi. And you don't want to contaminate it. It's a sensor, so you want to keep it clean. And uh, the nice thing on this, they actually have a special dry lubricant that they put on there. You can actually see it. it's kind of a charcoal color. And so you don't need any anti-seize. All you need to do, screw it in, tighten it up, put in the plug, and you're done. Now stepping inside the technology behind the O2 sensor is actually kind of interesting. Now a lot of us have probably seen one before but never really realized you know, how it works. Now we know how it you know, basically functions by reading the oxygen in the exhaust system, telling the computer how good a job it did of predicting how much fuel to add to the incoming air. So it's a feedback mechanism that really tightens up you know, the, the gap and the quality of air fuel control on your engine. Now you typically have three or four wires. In this case we've got four wires. Now two of those wires are going to lead to the first bit of the technology, and that's the heater. You've got to get the sensor up to temperature, so within a few seconds of turning on your key, 
uh, you're going to get this up to about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Now your sensor can work. So if we skip past a lot of the body of the thing and look at up here on the conical end, this is a zirconia ceramic, but it's coated with platinum on the exhaust side and the reference side. The reference side is really just your atmosphere. And it's referencing the difference in oxygen between the two, and that's the signal that it sends to the computer to give it the right message. Now what's kind of neat is uh, this is technology that's been around for a little while. It's really made our emissions way better and our computer response better. But the new style here, the new technology is planar. So they've combined the heating element and the sensor body itself, this sort of large mass of ceramic, and they've combined it in this thin strip. So it's all combined in one. So you can imagine with the smaller mass how quick it is to heat up and how quick it is to respond. So if you've got a cold start and you start your engine, this is going to kick off faster, up to six seconds, to get this thing up to speed and now controlling your cold start emissions and getting your air fuel under control, which is going to mean, obviously, better for the environment and it's going to mean better fuel economy. Now, Delphi's got a great coverage, about 95%, with all of their O2 sensors, and these are about 70% of everything out there running this conical style can now upgrade to the planar. So it's really great, you know you've got everything you need, the right leads, the right lengths, so they've got you covered. Now, we're out of time, we're gonna take a break, but when we come back, we got the Hot Rod BMW coming up. Hey, welcome back to the break room. We got a really cool product. This is from Danmar Equipment. It's their Max Jack lift system. Yeah, the great thing about this, a lot of times you don't have a lot of room in your shop, and this thing is portable. So not only does it hold 6,000 pounds, but you can actually unbolt it and move it over to a corner so you've got lots of room to work. Yeah, and if you're like me, I've got an eight foot ceiling. You know, getting a full two post or four post lift doesn't do me a lot of good, <laughs> but I can get one of these and I can get about 98% coverage on the project. And like you said, when I'm done with that project, I can unbolt these things and put them out of the way. And you don't have to sell it with a house. You can actually get it out. So that's yeah. pretty cool from Danmar Equipment, their Max Jacks lifting system. Next up from Satisfied Brakes, we've got their Torx Matrix composite brake pads. Yeah, and these are a unique combination of metal and ceramic compounds that are gonna give it unique qualities for that OE compatibility and performance. They've got a NRS plate bonding technology, and what this is, it's kinda of like little fingers right here at the plate. It's gonna grab the pad, mechanically bond it, and help keep pad shear from happening on these. Yeah, and they got little details that are real important for things like chatter and MVH, you know, from the chamfering and the bi-directional slotting. You're not gonna hit those little, you know, cooling veins inside your rotor, you know, and get that pad starting to make noise and chatter. They've got backing plates that are unique for these things. They're really going to give you that OE, you know, exceptional performance yep. you know, at a great performance cost. Sure. Be sure you get from Satisfied. It's their Torx Matrix composite brake pads. All right. Next up is from Blue Magic. This is their Headlight Lens Restore. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip. Don't tell anybody. Shh, shh. Not only will this do headlights, it'll also do taillights. Crazy, crazy. Tip from the pros right here. Yeah, and a lot of shops, this was their sort of magic secret for a long time, but you know, this is something that works really well for taking that coloring, that yellowing out of your lenses. It's gonna give you that optical clarity. It's gonna bring back those lumens. Bring back the lumens? Yep. So it's gonna make it, you know, much brighter so you can see down the road a lot safer and it's gonna protect and keep it from yellowing, you know, in the future. Yeah, there's a high silicone content in here, kind of like a wax, so it's gonna really keep that yellowing from coming back over time. That's from Blue Magic, it's their Headlight Lens Restore Kit. Now, all right, now don't go anywhere because we've got Bird's personal project coming in at the end of the show. It's a little combination of BMW, it's a little combination of Chevy V8s. You wanna see this one, hold on. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. I told you, Bird's personal hot rod right here, 90 BMW M3. Yep, it's a little peek at the insanity that is Bird. Now you've seen a lot of my projects around here, but you know I've got local proximity. All I have to do is roll mine in the trailer, drive it down, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, but mine's a little bit farther away, so I called my buddies at United Road Service. They came to my door, 
help wheel it right in, strapped it down all nice and gentle, took care of it the whole way down, and here we are, nice and delivered. It's a little hard in the dollies to get it all the way here. So what happened, you know? This car was a great race car in its day. Inline four, 200 horsepower, did great on the road circuit. Yeah, did awesome on the road circuit. BMW homologated these literally to go race like Mercedes and Volvo and Alfa Romeo, you know, over in Europe. And right out of the box, they just dominated. These cars won 1,400 races in 1,600 days. It really kicked off the whole M series image for BMW. Yeah, so uh, that just wasn't good enough for you? Well, it, you know, BMW is not good enough for you. You know, it's not enough power. It's not fast enough. Well, you know, 200 horsepower and a 2,700 plus pound car. It's a great combination, but I just have the hot rodder in me. I just couldn't, couldn't contain myself that I took this race four cylinder out, which these guys were making over 300 horsepower with, and I had to get that bottom end torque. And as you can see, Shoom, I wanted to that? take a four cylinder and put another one in there. So I figured I'd do the V8. You can't take a Corvette LS motor and stuff it into a BMW, can you? Yes, I can. Oh, that's, there you are. But that's going to show you how stubborn I am because it's a four cylinder car with now a V8. So you can imagine all the packaging and issues you can have. And a lot of guys have done them. Conversions have been around forever. But a lot of times you see some choked header, some smashed, you know, air inlet, all the things that kind of take it away. And so I really wanted to respect kind of the heritage of the M3 and not take anything away. I wanted everything I did to add to the performance. So you get in the car and it's like, it's an M3 on steroids. <laughs> well, you've got a light aluminum motor. The LS should make you what, 500 horse or something? Yeah, this LS3 GM Performance 480 right out of the box with a standalone controller so you don't have to do anything. And that's with, you know, factory manifolds. But you can see, you know, I spent a good bit of time lacing these things because there's not a lot of room, just lacing them through, twisting around. You can see the other side. I mean, it's just kind of a nest, but I got all the lengths, I got the diameters, I got everything I needed for a full race header in a little four cylinder car. And this may not seem too hard, but when you imagine that all this is covered by a car and you're gonna yeah. stuff it in there, move pieces, move floor, move wheel wells in order to get it through. And then you still gotta run lines. And uh, you know, this guy, like a lot of you at home, did it in his own garage. Not like me, I'm lucky I have a, you know, I can do it 40 hours a week. You know, you got a couple hours here, the weekend, yeah. the wife's at school, you know, squeeze it in when you can. I got this little window where I can spend a lot of time in the garage. My wife's in night school, so I'm running out of time, man. So bringing it down here, get a couple extra hands on it, get this thing up and finished a lot quicker. Six speed? Yes. So we've got 500 horsepower and we're going to upgrade, upgrade the driveline all the way back. So I got a T56. I got this out of a, an old project, mm -hmm. so I wasn't quite sure what was inside. So I brought it to my buddies at Liberty's Gear. And we did a full rebuild and a lot of upgrades, which we'll show you. So that's going to give me really good precision all the way down the drive line. We're going to take a break. We're going to show you inside of this and start some of the next steps on this project. So stick around. Welcome back. We got our Tremec T56 six-speed transmission, which is a great transmission out of the box. But we're going to make it even better. Taking it to Liberty's Gears, these guys are clutchless racing transmission specialists. They make their own gears, actually. They make their own transmissions, and we're going to uh, enhance the transmission. Going to make it shift better for you. Going to make it handle more power. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Now, here's some of the things that they've done to my transmission. Now, starting with just some of the synchronizer assemblies, you know, what they can do, I'll show you how this works real quick. This is spline. This is on the output shaft, and this is what's going to actually drive, you know, out the tail shaft. This guy is just spinning freely until I can get the two engaged. So what I've got to do is take this blocking ring, I've got to push it onto this surface. And you can see the friction that's on here. It's a friction surface, and it's going to grab this gear, and it's going to either spin it up or slow it down to get these two at a very similar speed. So then I can apply you know, my fork, bang. Now they're engaged, and I can drive out the back. Well, they're going to do things like take these keys and take the stock stampings throw them away and make these really cool billet pieces. That's going to apply the right pressure on that blocking ring to get the right grab on this gear. They can also change the friction profile on here to accommodate what you want to do in your transmission. So they can either add more friction or take it away. Uh, polished my gear so it's a lot less friction on the gears themselves. And they can even peen the surfaces here. So I put a residual stress, make my synchros last a lot longer, especially in those spirited shifts. Now, 
keep going in there, they take everything from the shift fork and upgrade from plastic to bronze, lots of billet pieces, they replace the powdered metal parts, you know, and again, all the little pieces that could go wrong in a transmission, they enhance, they make them better, and they make them shift a lot smoother. Now, if you need a race transmission, Liberty's gears can hook you up with what they call face plating. You get rid of the synchros, and you got positive engagement. You can see how that locks in. It's fast, it's rugged, not necessarily smooth for the street. So if you need a stock Tremec, if you need an enhanced, upgraded Tremec, or if you want a full-on race transmission, they got you covered. What, we don't usually pull on phone books? All right, now this is an old science experiment showing stacking friction. And a clutch works similar to this by having between your pressure plate and your flywheel, this is where your clutch discs are. So you can imagine that on a stock setup like this where we've put an adapter, you've only got one clutch disc, okay? What we're gonna do, use the McLeod twin disc, so we're gonna use two, thereby increasing that surface area immensely, but we're gonna make the diameter smaller. All right, so we're gonna start stacking these. And by stacking them, just like that phone book, I have to put less pressure on. So what's great about it is I can get a real nice, friendly, streetable compound like these organic RST clutch discs. And by stacking them, I can reduce, you know, not only my pressure plate force, but my calf muscles. <laughs> I don't have to push the pedal so hard. I don't have to shove my crank into the thrust bearings. It makes everything more friendly. But now, with the RST version, I can get 800 horsepower with less pedal effort than I had in my stock. Pretty awesome. Now, if you want even more than 800, you can go to 1,000. They got their RXT version. Instead of organic, it's got the ceramic compounds on it. And it's the same unit. You just replace the clutch discs themselves. Yep, and uh, McLeod has all kinds of clutch components. You see this is an aluminum flywheel. Yeah. That's gonna reduce your weight a lot. It's a one-stop shop. Yep. Now, hope you learned a lot about ACs, you know, AC compressors and the systems. Delphi hooked us up with some great components to show the quality of the pieces inside. O2 sensors, a whole lot of technology today. Yeah, it was a good meaty show today, all yep. about the inside quality inside of a full engine. So that was pretty cool. We gotta go. Thanks for watching.